Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video, still tracking Tropical Depression Debbie as well as a new hurricane that could form in the Atlantic. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to TropicalDebits.com for Thursday, August 8th, 2024. The red arrow is pointing towards now Tropical Depression Debbie has been downgraded as the latest update at around 5 o'clock the eastern, uh, dumping a lot of rain across the Carolinas and even some tornadoes uh, touching down across the Carolinas. And then our next potential threat that we're going to have to monitor is by our black arrow that is now newly designated Disturbance 1, and it's got a moderate chance of becoming a hurricane. Here's the vorticity signature of our tropical entities. The top one on the left is Debbie. The bottom left, that was old disturbance one, now working its way across uh, Costa Rica and Nicaragua. Uh, so you'll see some heavy rainfall there. And then on the bottom right of your screen is the vorticity signature of disturbance one, slowly starting to get itself organized. So here's the latest satellite image of the disturb of uh, tropical depression Debbie now. As it works its way into the eastern, uh, western, and east, uh, western and central portions of North Carolina, and it's moving now faster than it was the past couple of days at 10 miles an hour, and it's expected to continue to accelerate as it uh, gets pushed away by a upper level trough to its north and west. So by the time we get to Saturday afternoon, it's already worked its way into Canada. So here's the radar image from. Uh, Mark Musenbaum's uh, site here, and you can see over how we made landfall in the Carolinas, and it slowly moved up through South Carolina into North Carolina. All those rain bands that you see on the right side of your screen have been coming on shore, potentially having some tornado warnings and watches associated with them. Some even even producing tor some tornadoes. So as you can see here from the Storm Prediction Center, we have over the next 48 hours between today and tomorrow the chance for tornadoes across the Carolinas, Virginia, up into Pennsylvania, New York, and southwestern portions of New England tomorrow. And all that rain obviously is also going to bring a ton of rainfall. And then where we have the Mount, the Appalachian Mountains, we could see an increased risk of rain and flooding and mudslides as we have orographic lift at the, as the rain goes up the side of the mountains. So here's the key messages from National Hurricane Center regarding Tropical Depression Debbie. On the left is in English and on the right is in Spanish. You could pause this to take a chance to read it. Moving on to Disturbance 1. Here is the latest satellite image out in the middle of the Atlantic. Not threatening anyone at the moment. Highly disorganized, but getting, a, according to the models, a chance to develop into our next hurricane. It's got a 0% chance over the next two days, but we're up to a 40% chance over the next seven days. So let's use the GFS model. The black hexagon will be disturbance one. And we're looking at the cyclonic vorticity. That's, that's the spin and energy in the atmosphere. It's like a taking an X-ray uh, and seeing where this storm can go. So here's the wind shear forecast, light wind shear, full on ahead of, across this storm. That's going to allow it to maintain its moisture bubble and protect itself from the Saharan air layer just to its north and west. Two days from now, we see this continuing to move across the main development region, slowly at first as we go underneath the Bermuda Azores High. Low wind shear environment still, so we have our moisture bubble protected, but you can see the dry air is starting to get eroded away. Now, by the time we get to Tuesday, August 13th, this is five days from now, we're going to be approaching the Caribbean islands at this point. We are going to have the beginnings of an upper level ridge start to form. And that, as we all know, decreases the wind shear even more in this environment. It also creates that lift mechanism spreading out the, the energy in the upper levels, converging it at the lower levels. And that starts to fire up the mechanism for tropical development. So we're down to a 10, 10 millibar low pressure system, maybe a tropical depression at this point or a weak tropical storm. 
Then we get to Thursday next week, which would be August 15th. And we're moving just north of Hispaniola at this point. You can see the vorticity is very tight and very small in nature too. So this could be a compact looking storm. We have a full blown upper level ridge at this point. So well shielded from any dry air, low wind shear environment. And once it gets away from the interaction of the islands of Puerto Rico and Hispaniola, you could potentially see this storm explode. And you see just that by the time we get to day 10 on Sunday, August 18th, where we have a 971 hurricane off the east coast of the United States again. So we'll keep an eye on it. This is just one model run. The, the first seven days look to be consistent on all models, and I'll show you the European now, as you can see here. But where that storm goes is still up for, uh, for grabs 10 days out from now. Will we see the Bermuda Azores uh, high erode away and allowing it to recurve away from the United States? Will it be strong and push it towards the United States or even into the Gulf of Mexico? Still too, too far out to say for sure. Here's the ensemble models seven days out. So not only will have we worry about disturbance one, but there's going to be two more tropical waves behind it in purple and pink that we'll have to monitor for development as well. And then 10 days out, you can see this widespread of where disturbance one can go, where it can continue moving west westward towards Cuba into the Gulf or curve closer to the east coast of the United States or even just out to sea and be a fish storm, hopefully with even higher chance of development with our two tropical waves behind it as we get to 10 days from now. Why? We are to have the favorable MJO uh, moving through this region. We're climatologically getting towards the peak hurricane season. August 20th is when be and between that and the middle of October is like peak hurricane season with the peak being November 10th. But look at the greens on the left side of the screen. That's all that rising air over Africa. That's where our tropical waves come from. Rising air over the Atlantic is favorable for tropical development as well. Not a lot of dry air, favorable wind shear with the La Nina coming on. That's why over the next three weeks, the, storm, the Climate Prediction Center is calling for an increased chance up to 40% of sea and tropical development in the main development region and extending towards the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, so definitely going to be seeing a lot more activity as we go through the rest of the month of August. So we'll continue to track Debbie and the impacts going to bring in terms of rainfall, flooding, and tornadoes. And then Disturbance 1 will have all eyes on it after Debbie's gone and starts to get its act together as it approaches the Caribbean islands, potentially becoming our next hurricane. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on Deciphering Weather. So if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.